And I'm not here to try and argue against Splice as a credible way of making music or anything like that. I've used it myself, but I think I found a better option. So today I'm going to make some music using sample libraries created by YouTubers. So many great creators on here that sample old gear or expensive or hard to find instruments and lots of them make their sounds available through their Patreon pages. So the plan is to sign up, see what you get and make some sounds out of what we find. Bass. Drums. S uh, more drums. Synthesizers. And more after a quick word from today's sponsor. I don't have a sponsor. This is Heimbach's Patreon exclusive content. So a couple of sounds that I've had my eye on for a while. So they're going to be the first ones that I see if I can seek out. Yes, this is it. This is it. The Bandmaster Powerhouse. I love the quality of these sounds. As soon as I saw Heimbach's video on it, I was straight on eBay. All I could find was just a collection of the tapes. Just the tapes. 1,500 quid. <laughs> You've got to love that totally crunchy broken sound. That is so cool. So what we're listening to there is the powerhouse drum machine, which is real drummers recorded onto eight track tapes. And you can flick between the various channels to hear the different tracks on the tape. Now, some people might find all that dusty, crackly, warbliness a downside. I absolutely love it. So for this first tune, I used the Bandmaster tapes for the drums. And the bass is another sample from Heimbach called Warm Tones or something like that. And then the strings are Decent Sampler, which I'll talk more about later. There's so many sounds here, I haven't got time to go through them all now. I'm just scratching the surface and pulling out a handful that I like. But I'll come back later and dig through properly. Another creator I really want to check out right now is Look Mum No Computer. Analog fart simulation machine? No, I don't think I'm all right. Although it's the first one that I've actually seen that says sample pack, so let's take it. It's the first one we've seen. Don't know how much I'm gonna need a fart machine, but you know, take what you get. <laughs> so it's well worth checking all of these guys out on YouTube because their, their videos on this gear are as interesting as the sounds. Obsolete sound lab test equipment sample pack. Sounds interesting. Short sounds and long sounds, we'll take both. Okay, that's the bottom of the first page. Let's leave it there. Because there's already enough to go through there. There's loads. I found this really nice loop on Look Mum. And then the final creator that I want to take some sounds from straight away right now is David Hillowitz. The first time I saw this keyboard, I wanted one so bad. I was straight on eBay looking them up, but they're quite hard to find. Normally don't work very well often out of tune, there's no external output. And so as quickly as I found it, I gave up on it and wrote it off. I thought, I'm never gonna have one of those. I've been here before trying to sample 2XL directly off the speaker with its no external output. Thank you again. Question 13. Hey, that's what I had. But then I found David Hillowitz. David's not only bought and sampled the piff, He's also added an output to it, tuned it, and then made all those sounds available for free. He also has a Patreon where you can support him in exchange for regular sample libraries. Sold. So here it is. My fully working, fully tuned PIF synth. It's been sampled through the DI and through the mic. And then you can blend the two sounds together like this. It's got a tone knob. Chorus, vibrato, and it's running on Decent Sampler, which is this amazing plugin that's free, but then you can buy different instrument libraries for it. Quite often when you're on Splice or a platform like that, you're trying to find the perfect sample that works. But this is a whole other level. If you can take old gear that's got that sound that you want, but it's in a very playable way, it's actually mapped out onto a keyboard that you can make sense of and play the chords and notes that you actually need for your piece of music. This makes it so much more free, so much more usable than just a copyright free sample. This is a copyright free sound or instrument, which is better, right? No, okay, maybe there's a barrier to entry because you've got to be able to actually play some music. 
more decent sampler. Cool sound. It's the sort of sound that's kind of fun to make yourself, actually. <laughs> Lo-fi is never something I've struggled with making. That's always come totally naturally. I remember I was in a studio once with somebody and they were mixing some tunes for me and they stopped and they're like, you know, you don't have to make everything crunchy and lo-fi. Sometimes it's nice when some sounds sound really clean alongside it. I was like, you think I do any of this deliberately? I'm just trying to make it sound cool. It just always ends up sounding really crunchy and distorted. Again, it's a cool sound, but all my keyboards sound like that anyway. You can literally get those kind of sounds out of any of these keyboards behind me. So, yeah, cool to have in this nice playable way with all these nice effects on, but actually, would I use them? I might as well just plug my own keyboards in and do that. Look at that guy. Mini Gan. That looks so cool. type of music you're making will obviously determine what creators you gravitate towards. So I love all these wonky sounds, but if you're making pop music, then maybe you should check out their aptly named Make Pop Music. Or if you're into drum and bass, maybe it's Moon Boy. Whatever kind of music you're making, there's bound to be somebody out there that's making sounds that be suitable for you. It's important that I say that I'm not affiliated with any of these people and I can't vouch for them. And so do not take anything I say as advice. In fact, I am telling you not to do any of the things that I am saying to do. Okay, so I've made a little beat here with the Drummer One samples, which were from Heimbach. It's kind of just a placeholder for now until I get some sounds in there and work out what I actually want to do with it. There's some cool sounds, and I quite like the idea of them just like firing off in the background a bit. That's so lush. Don't you think that is just the coolest sound? in for the stock sounds now but I want to avoid that really I want to build this all out of the samples even though I am liking those chords I'll just go for that vibe following those early kicks I'm gonna stick with that vibe I like that I think because of what our ears naturally do when you first start listening to that you're naturally going to be drawn to hearing the kick as the one there I'm already feeling the right groove, so it's hard to move it now. But I can, I'm imagining people hearing that kick as the one at first and not realising that the one's there until something else drops that makes that significant. So if we keep those early chords, I've muted them off. shift them back onto the one at some point or something that could be interesting okay something's happening so i found loads hopefully that was helpful to some of you obviously i'm only scratching the surface here there's so many creators that i could have called on i just went for the few that i had in my head that i knew had sounds that i wanted so it's a bit of a selfish video in that sense and not necessarily the widest spread of hey this guy offers the best samples for this or whatever but you know do your own research